Welcome everybody, my name's Luke. Uh, we're gonna do a, a little preparation of some conch today. I'm sure you saw in the uh, title that we're down here in the Florida Keys and I caught a conch uh, in about 45 feet of water, a giant conch and we're gonna eat it. And you're probably wondering, we're down here in the Florida Keys, how are we harvesting conch? We're gonna prepare it here, that's legal, right? Uh, yeah, harvesting queen conch, absolutely illegal. Um, however, this is a special type called a horse conch. It's not a queen conch of any kind. And they're actually unregulated, checked it, everything like that before we even brought it on the boat. I was surprised that it was down there, swam down, and it was so big that I had to bring it up. That's not something that would normally catch my attention, but I brought it up and it was so massive. We're like, let's double check the regulations. We double checked, we were talking, we're like, let's do a catch queen cook on this thing because you don't see too many of these, especially at this size. Um, so anyway, without further ado, got this one out of the ocean, pretty awesome. Uh, it was really hard to get off the bottom, especially in about 50 feet of water. It's pretty much like pulling up a little, tiny little anchor. Um, but you can see how monstrous this thing is. I'd say it's probably, my guess is about 10 pounds or eight pounds or something like that. Um, I'm gonna weigh it here in a second and we will figure out how much it actually weighs. Um, but we're gonna do a bohemian uh, style conch salad. Uh, I've had queen conch salad over in the Bahamas before. Kind of know how to make it. I looked up a few ingredients. It's my first time making it here. I've made it over there. Uh, and it was really good with the queen conch. Heard the horse conch's not as good, but we're gonna give it a try and, and see what happens. So. Anyway, it's my first video of a catch clean cook, so I might be a little bit nervous while I'm recording, but here we go. Yeehaw. All right, we went ahead and weighed it on uh, our scale. I weighed myself, and then I weighed myself holding it, and it was 13.4 pounds. Uh, and then I also individually weighed it, and it was 13.4 pounds. So just a massive, massive shell conch. Pretty amazing. I'm excited to get this thing going, if you can't tell. Uh, anyway, I figured uh, some people might like to know exactly how big this thing is. I don't know the best way to set it down without damaging, of course, the counter. There we go. Uh, let's see here. From, looks like tip to tip. Probably along here is the easiest way to do it. As you can see there, at the tip there, looks like 21 and a half, or 20 and, 20 and a half, maybe 20, let's see. Right at 20 or 20 and a half, that's a pretty <laughs> giant shell. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and start getting this thing prepped, so. All right, we'll just get to it. And it's gonna be messy and nasty. There's already some purple junk coming out of it, but there we go. I've heard you just grab and pull. We actually had this thing on ice and we just let it uh, get nice and frozen and then that's supposed to uh, help it come out of the shell a little bit easier. Um, but I'd imagine with this giant thing, it's gonna be a little hard for me to pull it out. So go ahead and Proceed to laugh as I try and pull out this giant 13 pound muscle out of here. I think it's gonna give me a hard time. I was going to crack a little hole here and pull it out because that's supposed to relieve that suction. Um, but I really wanna save the shell for my wife. That way she gets a little bit of a souvenir. Um, get some of this ice out of there. It's probably a worth of ice probably in there so <clears throat> all right we're back I'm gonna keep pulling this thing's got all sorts of sand and gunk and all sorts of nastiness this is gonna be a giant piece of conch it's massive um, but I think if I just keep working it a little bit here and a little bit there it'll work its way out of there Already loosening up a little bit. I don't know if y'all can see all of this. Uh, it's like sand from the bottom or crushed up shells. These things actually eat a lot of other 
similar conch shells and mollusks and things like that. Any type of shelled snail kind of creatures, they eat them and that's probably what that is, is some, some remnants of it. It might not seem like it's coming loose, but it is. It's, it feels like a giant tongue coming out of there. I mean, it's goopy and slimy and nasty, but I'm actually gonna rinse off my hands a little bit here. This is just interesting. It's coming it's slowly. I know you guys can't tell, but every inch it's just kind of starting to release. The more I can kind of push it down, I think let some of that liquid get down in there and help it release a little bit. <clears throat> this is going to be a lot of calm. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you this piece of conch alone without the shell is four pounds, five pounds, probably more. But I'm gonna put it back in that bucket so we get it out and we'll weigh it and see what the actual meat of it alone weighs. <clears throat> Just my grip a little here. Without breaking the counter, that's the big key. I don't know how I'm gonna ever get this thing out of there. To be honest with you, right now I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty certain I'm not gonna be able to get this out super easy, like I thought. These things are wrapped up in there, and I might have to just ding just a little hole in the top. After a few minutes, let's see, you guys can check it out. Oh, look at that gross juice coming out of there. That's kind of where I'm at. It's starting to come work its way out, just slowly but surely. I'm trying not to cut myself or break my counter. All right. <laughs> Yeehaw. We're getting there, look at this slime. It's like a brownish purple. It's like brown and purple. Gunk. Oh. Oh, is this horse comp gonna beat me? It might. I'm gonna rinse my hand off one more time because it's so slick I can't really get a grip of this thing. Whew. All right. I'm being, I'm starting to be able to see a little bit farther in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But, oh, there's some gunk coming out. You can kind of see these other pieces of like whiteness. I don't really know what it is. It's my first time. I'm not familiar too much with this stuff. in there. I mean, some pieces are starting to come a little more and a little more and a little more. Come on. I guess maybe if I kind of try and twist it, maybe, since it's spiraled in there. Pull and twist, or push and twist and pull. I'm hoping that I push like that and then pull and maybe that'll give me a little bit of And way up in there. My knuckle crack. <sighs> We're getting there. You can see this kind of white piece coming out. Not exactly sure what that is. I guess I can look up some stuff and explain it a little bit later. <sighs> I'm going to get this goop is starting to flow onto the floor. I'm gonna clean it up really quick. 
All right, guys, after a while here, I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit of traction. So, well, I better pour that juice out. That might help me a little bit. I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's some purple, yellow, nasty juice, but starting to kind of get a little traction. You can see all this craziness up in here, but just keep slowly kind of tugging and pulling from different directions and kind of getting my hand way up in there. I'm just slowly pulling and I think I've got some leeway, right? I don't know if you guys can tell there, but it's kind of getting slowly but surely. Click on the pistol. They always talk about that. Uh, it might be a piece of seaweed actually. No, we're getting there. This thing is definitely not making it easy on me. This might be part of the reason why I won't harvest another one of these things again. Just I'm trying to keep the shell nice and all that. I might wait till I find one that's not still in there that I have to harvest. Almost feels like it's shrinking up a little bit, which is weird. I keep on waiting for something to reach and grab me or bite me or something in there. But so we've got it this much of the way out, and it's one of those so close yet so far kind of things because. It's like I can get my hand down in there. As soon as I start pulling, not much happens other than squishy gushiness. Kind of slimy, I don't know. It's pretty nasty, to be honest. I really don't want to, what I'm trying to avoid is I know that comes out guts and all. I'm trying to avoid either crushing its guts and getting it all throughout the meat and the shell, or ripping it and leaving all the guts in there, because the guts are all the way up in, in the main part of the meat, the muscle part, it's right here, on the outside. You see how far we're getting in there? Getting pretty close. All right, I'm gonna keep pulling at this thing. I won't bore you guys to death. We'll circle around here in a minute. I've been out this a solid 20 minutes now, just yanking and tugging. And you can see how far down I've got this thing. But it just feels like it hits that point and it just stops. And get my hand way up in there but nothing comes out like, come on <laughs> you can see I can get my hand way up in there and just can't it's almost like I'm just quit. but you can see how big this shell is I can get like half my arm up in What do you guys think? Am I gonna get this thing out or what? Almost, I feel like we're kind of getting closer, but maybe it just relaxed enough now. It's not frozen, it's just hanging out. Maybe I need to let this part kind of thaw out. I don't know. But here we are. All right, y'all. Look at this thing. I've got it most of the way out, but it's still just not releasing. Crazy. Uh, it's still leaking all sorts of goop. I've been tugging at this thing for a half an hour. You know it's bad, and you're at your wit's end. I'm gonna crack my counter down if I'm not careful. When you decide 
it's time. The first wash your hands. <laughs> because I'm OCD and I like things clean, which is, this is perfect for that, right? Um, to get out the power tool, so. Just gonna try and do a small hole, just small enough to uh, release some suction. I think that's gonna do it. So it's killing me to do this because this is absolutely perfect shell, but. some goop in it. A very small bit. A one-eighth, so very small. It's either one-eighth or three-sixteenths. Anyway, you can see it's the tiniest little hole. You can barely know it's there, but let's see if that did the trick here. Oh, I think I'm getting somewhere. I think that did it. I think that did it, guys. Oh, I think. Look at that, I'm ripping this thing. Oh, it's coming. You guys see it? It's coming. <laughs> this thing is weird, man. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh. Look at this. I don't know if you can tell how big that thing is, but that's my arm. Like, it's as long as my arm. I guess if I'm making a video, you guys should see me, but look at that. This is the weirdest thing I've ever, ever done. I'm not gonna lie, this is very strange. Trying not to lose any of this. It's starting to get real thin. My fear is that it, it, yeah, it's still a little frozen up in here. I think I've tore a little bit of it. So I'm worried that I don't want to get those guts stuck up in there. I'm gonna get some towels. I think the guts are stuck up in there because I can feel there's this little bit left. This little skinny piece that I don't think is going to pull the rest of the guts out. <clears throat> so here goes nothing. Oh, it's leaking a lot. And yep, it did rip. But I think I have a little bit of stuff I can grab onto. Some. I don't know if you can see that, but like some gut cords. I can still feel something up there. So all is not lost here. However, I'm pretty worried. I'm trying to keep this shell. That those guts will just not. If those things stay up in there, there's no salvaging this shell. It's going to reek forever. And that's what the shell looks like. You got this giant conch. Look at that thing. That's the meat in that. And then you've got this big, giant, huge conch shell, of course. But just this has got to be a couple of pounds in itself. I'm going to pull at this a little more. I'm not going to bore you to death. See all the slime? And then I'll revisit in a bit. All right, now we're going to start to kind of clean this thing. And from what I've read, it looks like I just have to cut most of the skin and stuff off. Um, all right, guys, one of the things I've seen the Sahemians do is there's all this gunk and just like slime on here. You can see there's even sand, maybe some crushed up shells. Because I've seen 
and they take just some regular old salt. They pour it all over this whole thing. And this salt was 99 cents, so I'm wasting a lot of it, but I think it's gonna come to good use when this thing is being eaten. It's gonna be worth it. So what they do is they just kind of scrub and you can see all this goo's coming off of there. I mean, just gunk. And they said this is almost just like a, just kind of scrubs all that nasty goo. You can kind of just get it to see all that gunk off there. Comes off real good. They said just kind of work your hands in it. And that kind of just pries whatever goo is in all these cracks and crevices off of there. Even before, this is essentially the skin. So even before you get into the meat, kind of like when you fillet a fish, you don't want it being super, uh, you don't want it being super slimy and nasty because eventually that can transfer to the meat. So I like to, just go ahead and get a little, I don't know what I'm pulling apart there, honestly. I don't know, it looks like maybe some conk. We'll find out here in a little bit. Just kind of, they always cut this hard piece off. It looks like right now, kind of got this thing scrubbed the dub dub pretty good. So I'm going to trim all this skin off and the foot, I don't really know if that's the right way to do it or what it's called, but I'm going to, from what I researched, typically you just peel all that red off because that red is just the skin. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and start cutting it up. Alright guys, so I've removed most of the skin. I really haven't got it all, um, but there's a lot of goop in it. It's all this red skin. You can see you try and get it as thin as possible to save all the meat as possible. But you can see it's nice and white. It's actually a huge, giant chunk of white. Look at that. Huge. And I'm working on getting all this nasty junk off, but you can look at pieces like this one. I'm used to conch being kind of tough. This is like super, super tender. So I'm hoping we just got lucky and got some uh, good tender pieces. Um, but definitely this foot part, the part the, that kind of eats everything, I think I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna save that and see if we can do something with it. There's a lot of meat there, as you can tell, but it's a little bit grayer, a little bit tougher. So I think it might be better for saving for things like uh, fritters and stuff. So anyway, all right guys, I've kind of got all of the skin off. I'm sure there's a little bit more. I'm saving this for some other people to kind of dig through that 
because um, I'm sure it's usable, but it's just a little tougher. And then in the middle of that, I'm just left with this soft, white, really nice conch, actually. Look at how much that is. That's all conch. That's probably a pound and a half of conch. And you can see it's like super white and tender. See how like it's not very rigid. It, it'll fold right in half, no problem. So I think it's going to make for some really good conch salad. I don't know that I'm going to get to the conch salad today because <laughs> it's like it's 10.03 and I've been working at this thing for over an hour now. I'm getting tired, so I'm going to toss this in the fridge. I wasn't able to get every little piece out of this conch shell, so I'm trying to figure out. Uh, the guts are stuck up in there, and I want to save this shell because it's gorgeous, and I don't know how to get it out. So I think I'm going to wait to do the full recipe until later. We'll let this sit in the fridge for a day, and we'll regroup tomorrow and, and figure it out. But anyway, one last look at our at the shell here before we get to cooking later. And that's what we ended up with right here. Pretty cool, huh? All right, hopefully the conch salad is just as good. Cheers, yeehaw. All right, everybody, I'm back. It's, uh, didn't get to finish it all last time, but uh, here we are. Sometimes you get tired and you gotta stop. Um, anyway, we're gonna finish up our bohemian conch salad. I got all my ingredients here, pretty simple. Got a couple peppers. Uh, we're gonna chop up and put in there, um, orange, and we've got limes that we can put in there. We squeeze that over the top. Um, we're gonna do some onion as well. Gonna chop that up, and then do some tomatoes. And then I haven't decided whether I'm gonna do the habanero or the chili. I think traditional is more of a habanero. Um, so we'll see what we end up doing. I didn't put all of it, um, I'm not going to put all of it in what I make, I actually saved a lot for some friends and I've got that stored away to give to them. Um, but you can see I got a pretty large piece, nice and fresh and white and super, uh, super tender actually, it wasn't as tough as I thought. Um, anyway, I'm just going to trim a little bit, some of that purple goo that was in there, I'm going to trim off of here just so that it's nice and uh, I feel like that's going to have a little bit of a fishy, oceany flavor to it, so I'm going to cut that off so it's nice and uh, clean uh, and chop this into basically little pieces. So to get it to this point where it's this white, as you could tell when I was pulling all of that out of that shell, that red that was around it was actually all the skin that was on there. So I just took a small paring knife just so I get as much of it as I could, just took my time with it. Uh, I cut a lot off initially and then went back and cut little pieces out to share with everybody. Um, but I got a pretty good chunk that I'm going to save for myself for this uh, video and everything. Uh, so we're going to go through that, but I'll go ahead and cut all this up. Um, we'll worry about, I guess, all of the toppings later, all of the ingre other ingredients. Um, and we'll just get this kind of uh, cut away. But you don't want to leave any of that nasty goo. It's kind of like with, uh, with fish, if you have like a bloodline or something like that, you don't want to leave that bloodline in there because that tends to make it uh, taste kind of kind of nasty and kind of fishy. You want your fish to taste like fresh, like the ocean, not like, like a fish that's been sitting in the fridge for days. So uh, typically you want to make sure you cut that bloodline on there. Sim similarly with this as well. Um, so I'm going to trim this up just a little bit more. Uh, some of the little edges. I might save this and try and salvage it, but there's so much here that I think if it's gonna be a little bit fishy and a little bit nasty, I'll probably just get rid of it. But um, Yeah, so I'm gonna cut it into small little pieces here. And now, before I cut this into small pieces, I'll let you guys get a kind of close up of what this meat looks like. As you can see, it's Pretty white, it's got a little bit of a light pink color to it. Um, yeah, super, as you can see, tender and pliable. It's not super tough. I'm 
just going to dice this up a little bit into smaller chunks. I think I'm going to do little bits at a time, kind of do half of this, test it out, and then finish the other half. So I'll make a small, small bowl, and then I'll get back to this. So it's pretty much dicing it up. That's the way I've seen all the Bohemians do it. They kind of chop it into pieces real quickly. Of course, with they use Queen Conk. We're using Horse Conk, which I'll also say, if you're out there and you see a conch shell, definitely make sure you identify it really well. Don't just assume it's a horse conch or what type of conch it is. Make sure you're identifying it very well. Horse conchs tend to be long and skinny um, to where queen conchs kind of have that flat top, big crown, and a big flare on the opening that kind of flares up and over, where this is kind of long and skinny. So uh, make sure that you look up some pictures, you identify them, and before you pull one out of the water, if there's any doubt, just have somebody uh, Google a couple pictures of them, compare, because uh, you certainly don't want to find yourself on a boat in the Florida Keys, or anywhere really, with a queen conch, other than the Bahamas where it's legal and places like that, but you don't want to find yourself anywhere in Florida with a live one like that. Um, there's some serious fines, especially here in the Keys, for uh, having a, harvesting them in any way live. Um, so you absolutely don't want to do that. Just a quick disclaimer. Um, so make sure you study up on that. Um, what else? I was reading an article the other day, and University of Central Florida did a uh, study where these actually grow to be usually only about eight to 10 years old. They used to think that it, they'd live to be about 50, but only eight to 10 years old. The biggest one was 23.9 inches, and they think it was about 16 years old. This one's a whopping 21 inches, so I'm assuming it's bigger than most of the ones uh, that they're used to having or seeing. Um, so yeah, pretty large one. I'd say it's probably over 10 years old, but pretty cool. Um, but the sad thing is with that lower lifespan, they're not, uh, they're not actually reproducing as much. So, um, would I harvest another one? I'm not sure. And knowing now that they're kind of in decline because people have been harvesting them so much and they're not as old, I don't know, maybe one of these bigger ones I'd let go, maybe get a smaller one that's not as old and not reproducing. They say they reproduce at about six years of age. So at about six years, uh, they're probably pretty large. I'd probably do a smaller one, but they're pretty obvious. They say when they're, uh, if you look at like um, the eggs that grow out of them, the big casing and everything, you can tell when they're reproducing and this one wasn't. But um, I would definitely leave those ones alone. Although there's no, commercial or recreational limits right now. At the time that I'm shooting this, I'd imagine with that new USF study that was in 2022, they'll probably start to regulate them at least a little bit, which is probably a good thing. Um, all right, I got this all chopped up. I'm gonna spare you the, uh, you can kind of see the consistency I did. Just little tiny cubes. Uh, I'm gonna chop up all the veggies. I'm not gonna bore you just showing me chop up all the veggies, so I'll just chop them real quick. And then we'll get back to constructing the uh, conch salad. All right, everybody, I just got done cutting everything up, getting it all diced and sliced, and I got a lot of onions in my eyes, so they've been watering. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and start constructing it in this bowl here. Uh, pretty simple. Just take all of your diced up horse conch there. Got quite a bit of it. Put that in there. Pretty simple. There goes the GoPro, turn it off. So you can see I've got right now about that much. Pretty simple. And then I'm going to add probably some onions next. Um, just to see how much I think I'll need. I like onions a lot, so put a decent amount in there. You can kind of see how much I put in. I have both red and orange bell peppers. Uh, so I'm just going to put a little bit of each of those in there. I like that just to make it nice and colorful. I'm going to save the rest for the other half. Um, and then I diced up some tomatoes. It looks a little messy, it was. 
I'm not going to put a whole lot of tomatoes because I'm not a giant fan. I never sell them putting too much, just a little bit for consistency. You can see what I got there. And then the fun part, what I like is, and I didn't, I'm not going to put that much in just because other people are going to be having this, but I'll probably add more after they've tried it. That's all diced up habanero pepper. So that's kind of what adds that kick. Pretty simple there. And then of course, cut a couple limes here, squeeze the limes in there. Kind of like how you would do a ceviche. Squeeze all that in. Crazy. These are a little older limes, so they're taking a second to get all the juice out. You can kind of see. And then unlike most traditional ceviches, once you've done all the, all the limes and got all the lime juice in there, we're gonna do a little bit of orange too, which is what I always saw them doing. Not a whole lot of orange. I guess it depends on who does it, but typically just a good squeeze. These are Florida oranges, real juicy ones. They're not navels, they're actually meant for juicing, so. See if they're actually as juicy as you would hope. Yeah, so you can see how juicy those are. Somebody's gonna get a seat. <laughs> Pretty easy. Pick out those seeds if you can so people don't break a tooth on them. I guess that's the one downside of using the ones for juice, but just keep an eye as you're squeezing that in there for any that might fall. And I got the only two that fell in. All right, I'm gonna juice a few more of these in here and then stir it and we'll circle back around. All right, am I good? All right, everybody. I've got all my ingredients together. You can come over here, I'll show you. I did like six or seven limes to about one and a half oranges just to start. It's a pretty good ratio. Uh, if you look down in at my bowl here at all the juice I have, you can kind of see how much I've got. A decent amount of it sitting in there. I've got the conch on the bottom. I kind of let it sit for about, I don't know, three or four minutes and just soak in all that. Um, citrus and citric acid. So now we'll just give it a quick stir. You can see it all kind of changing color there. I'm gonna mix it in real good. Get all those flavors and juices going. I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't a little bit nervous to try this. In fact, I might even let it sit a little longer like I do ceviche when I want the fish to cook a little bit. Um, let it sit, but you can kind of see what it looks like. And then I'm going to adjust how much um, of each ingredient I got. I think I have a decent amount of everything. I might add just a little bit more maybe bell peppers for some crunch. And a little bit more maybe habanero. They can't really smell the habanero. so Yeah, we'll give that a soak. And I'll try it here in a second. So here we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. You can see it's been sitting. You got enough juices there to kind of soak it all up. Lots of conch. You can see the big opaque chunks there. All these chunks, it's mostly conch with just a little bit extra in there. So I'm gonna take a pretty good piece so I can taste a little bit of everything. So you get some juices in there. Anyway, I'm gonna give it a go. Here goes on. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. It's actually really good. So I can taste the habanero a lot more than I thought initially, so it's hit me with a little heat, but the sweetness from the oranges kind of balances that out. And that conch adds some natural saltiness. It's not as sweet, I don't think, maybe as the clean conch, but it's definitely super tender. 
um, a lot more tender than I thought. Everybody is telling me I was going to have to pulverize it and hit it with a mallet and make it super tender that way. And I think you just cut it up and do it as is. It's a little bit chewy, kind of like you would uh, like with ceviche, a little bit, a little bit chewy or something like um, the calamari consistency if you've ever had calamari, but super awesome. I definitely would recommend doing it. Would I harvest one of those again? I'm not so sure. Like I think I told you guys before, um, at six years, it it's when they start reproducing. They only live to be about 10, and that one's probably older than 10 years old. Um, maybe a smaller one, but it took me a lot of time to get that out. It was a pain in the butt to get it out. And just that and cleaning it and all of that alone, I don't know if I would do that again. Partially because I didn't want to break the shell with a queen conch, you would just hit the back of the shell, uh, cut the inside and pull it right out, but I was trying to save the shell, so that's why it was so hard for me to get out. If you had a smaller one, you didn't care about the shell, I guess you could do that and pull it right out and be quicker, but uh, anyway, knowing that their population is declining a little bit because of people collecting the shells and them being a little bit shorter lifespan than they thought, I don't know that I would collect another one just for that. Um, as opposed to in the Bahamas, I'd grab some queen conchs, no problem. So tell me what you think. Should we harvest them? Should we not? Should we make some delicious conch salad? Because I still have all of this meat left, plus probably three times this amount left in the fridge from that one for some friends so they can make their own recipes. So it's gonna feed a lot of people. Um, pretty happy about it. Anyway, enjoy, hit like, hit subscribe. Um, yeah. Next time. I'm here with the one, the only William Lau. He's gonna try out the horse conch salad. What do you think? It is really good, actually. <laughs> Not bad, right? Is it spicy? No, it's really good, though. Got like the right amount of onion and tomato on it. A little citrus. Recommend. There you have it. Lau approved. That was good. <laughs>